Hi, hoteliers. Welcome back to another episode of M3 Minutes. We're here for this special episode dedicated strictly to International Women's Day 2024. And now I'm excited to present the very wonderful Julie Stewart, our Chief HR Officer here at M3. So welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Glad to be here. So you've been at M3, tell me how long? Since 2011. Okay. So quite, quite a number of years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, well, I'll kind of getting into that since we're, you know, here today to talk a little bit more about the International Women's Day 2024. And so this year, the theme is Inspire Inclusion. And so, you know, typically when you think of initiatives that are driven, that are geared more, you know, for, for everyone as a, as a population, mm -hmm. it's a lot of HR movement back there that's really making that happen because they're the, the heart that's thinking of the company as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that theme, inspiring inclusion, what does that mean to you? Um, so, you know, lately inclusion, diversity um, has been big buzzwords um, all over the place. And mm -hmm. all kinds of companies have been hiring D&I specialists and um, really putting a lot of emphasis um, on the whole diversity and inclusion idea, um, which is great. Um, but in the in the reality of day to day business, uh, what we're going to be doing is hiring the very best people for the job. And one thing that I learned a few years ago, and I can't remember the woman's name, but a, a very well known uh, CEO of Fortune 100 company said that it's important to her to have a diverse workforce. Mm. And somebody asked, "Well, don't you want to hire the best people?" And she said, "Yes, I want a diverse workforce, and I want to hire the best people, and they're not mm. mutually exclusive." And so I took from that um, a reminder, you know, that when we are asking for a slate of candidates from our recruiting partners, that we insist that they give us uh, a diverse slate of candidates so that we have men and women to choose from, people of different nationalities, um, people with different skin colors, so that we are at least entertaining the very best candidates that represent our society as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, inclusion is a, um, a very important word, and sometimes people don't think about it quite deeply enough, I think. Mm -hmm. um, inclusion doesn't just mean that you get to get hired by a company. Oh, right. we're inclusive because we've hired you. Um, instead, what inclusion means is that not only did we hire you and you accepted our offer, but once you got here, we made you a part of the team. We made you part of the party. Um, you didn't just come in and get to go listen to the music at the dance, but you also get to get out on the dance floor and dance. And to me, that's what inclusion is. It's not just inviting people to the party. Right. It's letting them experience the whole party. And in the workforce, of course, what that means is accepting leadership roles, getting opportunities for interesting work, mm -hmm. just as much as men. Or if we're talking about other minorities, all of us getting a chance to do what we do best, um, regardless of what we look like or sound like. Wow. I love that expression, you know, bringing mm -hmm. everyone to the party, everyone to the dance floor. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. That's that's a really great way to look at it. You thank know, you. not just mm -hmm. standing out and looking in, but actually being able to participate. Yeah. Your voice is heard. Right. And, yeah. th and that's an overused phrase. You know, we all want our voice to be heard. Right. But but we do. We actually want to be heard and understood. And we want our idea to be given uh, consideration. Mm -hmm. You know, not always a yes, but always given consideration. Right. Right. So those are your personal thoughts on this year's theme. So now with that, at M3, I know we want to walk the, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk. So with that, can you tell me a little bit more about what steps does M3 take specifically to inspire inclusion? Um, sure. So I think the first one I alluded to um, a second ago, which is that we do insist on having a diverse slate of candidates um, whenever we can find um, well-qualified people without sacrificing any of those needs, um, we want to make sure we're in interviewing the best of the best and that we're not ruling people out because of some superficial difference between people. Mm. Um, so that's number one. Um, we do a lot of training with our hiring managers to make sure that they understand the, the implicit bias and um, the things that they might be bringing to the table that they don't realize. For instance, if somebody says, I don't think she would be a good leader, her voice is so soft. Mm. So, you know, people mm. can hear someone with a soft voice. Right. Um, so that's not really a good reason for turning down someone because they don't have a loud voice. Right. You know, um, if somebody is more mild mannered, uh, somebody might say, I don't think they can control the room. 
well, I know there are a lot of people in the world that can control the room with very soft voices and very gentle approaches. Yeah. And so educating and making sure that people understand um, that these things should not exclude people from the job. A heavy accent um, in the world of IT, you know, we have a lot of people who are coming from other countries mm -hmm. um, uh, like, you know, India. Um, and we don't want to exclude people because they have a heavy accent. Mm -hmm. And so we coach people that they need to listen to the person and see if they can pick up the cadence of their accent and don't rule them out just because the first sentence was a little harder to understand. Right. You know, give them time mm -hmm. to get comfortable in the room and get give yourself time to get used to their cadence. And then communication may be a non-issue. Right. Um, so those kinds of trainings are what one thing that's necessary to bring inclusion uh, into M3. Additionally, we recruit from other resources, um, such as veterans groups, women's groups, um, you know, anything we can find, we try to put fishing, fishing lines out there so yeah. that we can find those people. Once they're here, uh, it's pretty easy. We have a very nice group of people here, and I think most people here are very welcoming to others. Um, and so then it's just more along the lines of making sure that everybody has opportunity and that we don't look overlook people. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, specific to women, um, one of the problems with the women's workforce now is that they often end up quitting the workforce mm. because they have competing needs like with their family. Mm. And even though it's 2024, um, it does still, still seem like most women are the ones that have most of the responsibilities for the kids. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when women can't find the right balance or the right flexibility to deal with that, often they're the ones that exit the workforce. And that has huge repercussions, not only for the workforce, but for the woman's future career. Mm. Um, it gets her behind. And so uh, here we have some family-friendly policies. Uh, we allow women to work at home the last month of their pregnancy uh, so that they don't have to worry about driving and being uncomfortable coming in in rush mm -hmm. hour. Um, we allow them to obviously take their, their legal leave that they're allowed to have, but we also offer paid leave in conjunction with that. And then after the leave is over, we give them three more months to phase back in so that they don't have to come back in 40 hours a week in the office or 24 hours a week in the office mm -hmm. if we're hybrid, um, they can ease their way back in and get used to the idea of leaving a baby behind right. and finding that adequate daycare. So we're doing things like that to make life easier for the women in the workforce, as well as the men. But honestly, it's usually the woman that has the brunt of that responsibility. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. I know because that's that seems to be one of the things that's kind of coming up in more modern workforce is the paternal leave, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how places are becoming a little more competitive because, you know, however a child is brought into this world, it's it's a lot on a woman's body, mm -hmm. you know, from what I've been told. Um, and I've seen through through various friends. So I think that's why that's become more of a discussion is, you know, having that paternal leave mm -hmm. for more support if they need that as well. That's right. You know, so I love hearing things like that um, because, you know, it it's that benefits the culture for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's we have a team member who's expecting on our team and, and it's so wonderful to see that that person is feeling supported. Mm -hmm. You know, we all support her, but especially right. as a company that, you know, she's going to have a place if she chooses to return. Right. You know, so. Exactly. Wonderful. Wonderful. So speaking of um, the opposite sex, mm -hmm. you know, since we were just kind of talking about that. So my question is, what role can men play as allies in advancing gender equality and how can we encourage more men to actively support and champion women's rights? So that's a great question, and, and I have thought about it a bit. Um, one fallacy that's out there is that we just need to promote more, more women because we need more women um, in leadership. And who cares what their qualifications are and who cares if they're the best person? We just need to have more female representation. So, mm -hmm. so we want the men to promote us because the men are typically the ones in charge. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Um, we still want to go back to the idea that, you know, the best person for the job is the one that's going to get promoted and the one that's going to be given the most interesting project or the most challenging customer. Um, and the way that men can be um, allies to women is by promoting the women who are the most qualified mm. and helping them by exposing them to these different things um, along the way, grooming them and uh you know, helping to train them and helping to bring them along so that they will be ready when the time comes for a promotion or a difficult or challenging um, uh, project. What we don't want is, is, 
his uh, women to be patronized. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want a woman just to be promoted because it's time for a woman to be promoted. Right. Um, that leads to things like women feeling like they're imposters and, and you've got imposter syndrome where mm -hmm. women think, am I really as good as him? Should I have been promoted? Maybe I'm not good enough for this job. You know, I'm a pretender. Um, I'm faking it. When are they going to figure it out that I'm faking it? A lot of women feel that way. Um, I've experienced that where I've wondered, you know, am I am I really good enough for this? You know, mm -hmm. my degree isn't in human resources. It's in music. Right. Who am I to think I'm good enough at this? Um, and what we need are for people who are in power, who most often are men, um, even still in 2024, mm -hmm. um, to validate that you are, in fact, the best one for the job or one of three or four equally qualified people and you're going to get due consideration. And so it's men putting our names up for promotion and it's men exposing us uh, to various experiences in the workplace so that we can get our toolbox filled up with all kinds of experience and tools and be ready when it's our turn. Right. Right. Um, one other thing I think women can learn from men is uh, you don't hear men saying, I'm sorry, very often. Mm. You don't hear men saying, you know, I hate to say this and, and I may not be right on this, but let me just um, tell you what I think. Men don't approach it that way. You know, men just say what they think. Yeah. And they don't even say, I think. They say, I know that this is the problem. Hmm. Whereas a woman might say, well, I've done a little research and I think this is right, but it may not be. We've got to learn how to be more assertive mm -hmm. and more direct in our conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we can learn from men. And I, I think something as well, you know, I've, I've learned in um, my professional years is working is also as women to lift other women up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and one thing that I think really helped me make the move over to M3 is when I came in for my first interview, I interviewed for a very different role. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I came in, met with two women, mm -hmm. interviewed by both of them, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got home that afternoon and I, and I got the call from, from Jeremy, yeah. the recruiter. And he mm -hmm. said, you know, they both felt like you'd be better in this role. And I said, you know, I really, I didn't think about that role and I was kind of shying away from mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, Long story short, here I am, which yeah. is fun. But if I didn't have that moment to where I had two very, you know, just um, thoughtful women to say, you know what, you know, while this person would be good in this this department, she would excel better in this. Mm -hmm. And to want to lift up and empower and to to have that, you know, feeling from a company that allows them to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love that. And That's so I awesome. feel like we have that around here at M3 that, you know, we want to operate as a team and lift one another up. Right. Absolutely. So, Julie, I'm going to move on to to education because education is so important to both men as women. And so I'm very curious about um, education is often cited as a critical tool for empowering women and girls. How can we make education more inclusive and accessible? Mm -hmm. So that's it's a big question, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, in the United States, we're lucky. Um, you know, our society is such that um, school is is a given. Um, it's it's expected that every every child is going to start school around the age of five, and they're probably going to go through around the age of eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's it's a right, but it's an expectation in the United States that that's going to happen. And that's regardless of who you are and where you came from. Everybody goes to school. Right. Um, girls out outnumber boys now in college. Um, you know, we're roughly even in terms of the, our percents of the population, mm -hmm. um, but the girls are in college and the girls are finishing and um, the boys are floundering a little bit um, in college. And so I think that we can see that the girls um, are doing a much better job and, and all of us in society are doing a much better job of making sure that our girls also pursue higher education, not just the men. Um, but one thing that's still happening here is that men still dominate in STEM careers. Mm hmm. And um, women still tend to go toward feminine pink collar jobs like human resources, mm -hmm. nursing, um, teaching, um, very valuable jobs that don't pay as much as other jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we need to do is, first of all, make sure that the jobs are being paid what they should be so that women who are naturally perhaps drawn to helping careers are actually paid for that valuable skill. Right. Um, and then second of all, we need to encourage girls um, that have got the intellectual capacity to do math and science, um, we need to make sure we encourage them from an early age. 
Um, here at M3, we do offer tuition reimbursement once you've been here six months um, to help pay for, for degrees. Um, we do just-in-time learning. We offer software to all of our tech people um, uh, so that they can constantly sharpen um, their skills in mm -hmm. certain tech things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so we have a lot of of uh, tools within M3 to help the women here advance themselves. But I think that needs to be extended out into the world. Thank you for adding in that portion about M3. That was one of the things I was going to ask mm -hmm. is if you could elaborate a little bit about some of the incentive programs that M3 has on education. So beat me to it. Awesome. I appreciate okay. that. <laughs> sure, that sure. That was good. That was good. Julie, I really appreciate you coming on today mm -hmm. and, and sitting down with us and, and taking a few minutes to just join us on the couch. So mm -hmm. Any other parting words of wisdom you'd like to leave with us? Uh, thanks for asking. I think um, I have a little bit, just a little. Um, I think for the male listeners out there, um, I think that it would be great if you would remember the unique skills that women bring to the workplace. Uh, we have a different way of looking at problems. We have a different way of solving problems. We have a different way of interacting with people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important that the men out there recognize that if we work together and if uh, both genders are included in many of the decision-making uh, practices of a company, um, you're going to get better solutions mm -hmm. um, because you're using um, the male brain and the female brain and the hearts that go along with both of those. And then for the women, I would just say in my career, what I have learned um, is that you absolutely need to help other people, um, but you also need to decide what it is you want. And you need to be the main force that gets you there. Don't wait for other people uh, to invite you. Um, there is a way to advance your own career without hurting anybody else. Right. Um, but advocating for yourself is a very important skill that I think women need to learn. And I know for my career, that's what I've had to do every step of the way. I've, I've had to be my own advocate. Right. Right. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. well, thank you so much again. We appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of M3 Minutes. Today, we celebrated International Women's Day, and it's something we plan to continue to do all year long. If you like this episode, make sure to head on back to that lobby and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, hoteliers.